If you've heard of OTT before, you'll know how much of a staple it is in modern electronic music. But why does it sound so good? And how does it actually work in make that squashed effect? Today we're going to dive into an OTT tutorial that covers everything you need to know about OTT. Firstly, we're going to start by explaining what multiband dynamics is. Then we'll jump specifically into how the OTT preset works. And then some applications of how you can use this plugin or preset, depending on which version you've got, to make your sounds really squished and sound really cool. So this isn't going to be a super long video. So make sure to watch the whole thing so you really truly understand how OTT works and how you can best apply it. By the way, if you're interested, I have made a pack of variations of the OTT preset in Ableton. You can click on the link in the description below if you want that now. I'll explain what it is later, but let's jump into this tutorial and unpack OTT a little bit. So as you know, there's the OTT preset, which is part of multiband dynamics. But apart from that, you've also got the OTT plugin version, which is made by x Records, um, Steve Duda, who makes x Serum. And basically the plugin version is just him doing his best to recreate this in plugin version so you don't have to uh, use Ableton, you can use this in any DAW. First of all, I'm going to explain uh, the original uh, preset here, OTT, and how it kind of works in the plugin context. So I'll drag in a multiband dynamics plugin on these drums here. So obviously this plugin isn't just OTT, it's a lot more general, it can do a lot more crazy stuff. Let's go into how this effect actually works. So basically how it works is it splits the frequency spectrum into three different bands, low, mid, and high. You can turn the compression slash dynamic control on each band off. Um, for example, if you just want a two band compression, you turn off the high and then just use low and mid, or you could do the highs and mids depending. You've also got an on off switch. If you want to bypass the compression on that band, you can just switch it off so that won't be affected by compression, but the high signal will still come through dry. You can also solo the three bands and, as I said, change the crossovers. So, what can I use these three bands to do? Well, basically, each band has two lots of dynamics controls, uh, one on the up side and one on the down side. The up side com applies either downwards compression, which means it's heading, it's making the signal back down once it crosses the threshold, or upwards expansion, which makes the signal go louder when it crosses this threshold. Uh, conversely, on this band, you've either got upwards compression, where it's pushing the signal back up when it goes below the threshold, or downwards expansion, which basically acts like a gate, if you know what that is, where it reduces the signal once it drops below the threshold. You've also got attack and release for each band, uh, which allows you to specify how fast it's going to react on that specific band. You've got input and output gains, so you can really drive the signal into each band and then control it with the output, depending on how loud or soft it ends up being as a result of the compression. You've got your um, display here where you can click and drag as you can see there clicking down turns it into that downward ex downward compression rather mode whereas having that blue and clicking it up makes it the um, the upwards expansion and same on this side you got upwards compression versus downwards expansion slash gate but you can set the threshold by dragging the corners of them you can also shift drag to adjust all the ratios of the bands you can see that blue line there is the input uh, output signal. The yellow line is actually the input signal. So down here you've got soft knee which is on by default. It just means the compression that's applied is gradual rather than immediate once it passes the threshold. You've got RMS here which you can switch to peak mode but RMS is a bit more of an even sounding compression. It reacts a bit slower uh, to the average loudness of the signal rather than to the true peak value which I won't go into in this tutorial, but it's really handy to know that. Uh, lastly, you've got the output overall gain. You've got the time control, which scales these um, attack and release values here where I was talking about earlier uh, on a percentage value. So if you want to uh, change the timing of all these bands simultaneously, you can use this time knob here and scale it back or downwards. Then lastly, one of the most important features of multiband dynamics is the amount knob here which allows you to dry wet the signal so that there's not as much compression applied and you're allowing some of the dry signal through on all of the bands. So that's just the basic multiband dynamics plugin. Now let's load up OTT and see how exactly this preset is formed.
So there's quite a lot different from the default preset you would have noticed as I dragged this one in here. So let's go through the main differences. Now, the low crossover here is a bit lower. So we're really just applying this low bend to like those sub frequencies, which gives it some tighter control. Uh, you've also got quite a bit of gain on the input signal. Softening and RMS are the same, so we're getting that very even compression, but the real magic with the OTT preset is the settings of these thresholds and ratios and attacks and release. So we've got pretty standard attack and release for the specific bands. Obviously faster attack and release times are gonna work better on high signals because they are a lot shorter of a wavelength. So we can really smash those with this attack and release here, whereas we're leaving a bit more room with the attack and release on the lows, especially the lows with the attack there at 47. Uh, it's still quite fast, but it's just really allowing those frequencies to breathe. Otherwise, they'd be kind of distorting if you were compressing them any faster. But the, the real important thing here is, first of all, the above thresholds are all set around the same. Uh, we're allowing the mids a bit more room to breathe because compressing the mids too much can squash the sound in an unpleasant way, whereas highs and lows are a bit more, I guess, texturizing sounds and they kind of can be squished to get a really, really cool effect. And with the highs in particular, as I said, we can really get away with brutalizing those highs. So we're literally limiting them. And with these ones, we're a tiny bit relaxed, although not much more with a 66.7 to one ratio there. We're also applying upwards compression here. So it's being pushed down and then pushed back up. So really only being pushed into these tiny gaps of dynamic range here. And it's a four to one ratio approximately. So it is pretty heavy, but no, a bit way more relaxed than the other ones. It's not absolutely smashing the sound. If you know how compression works, then for every one dB over, it'll be a quarter of that at this ratio. So 0 0.25. So that's really good to know. But essentially, as you can see here, the lows and the highs are really what's being compressed here. And we've got a heck of a lot of output gain, especially once again on the lows and the highs to really hype those up. And then not as much on the mid, just because as we mentioned earlier, we don't want to brutalize those too much. We want to preserve that information a bit more. But this is a really intense preset. So as you can see, as you can see those that blue line there, is really being kept in that area there. Same with the lows and the mids. And this input gain here really smashes it into the top, wood, top compressor. So obviously the top compressor is doing more downwards compression than the upwards one. So that's why we're getting a really squished sound. We're really driving it into. This one's just more of a fail safe in case the dynamics drop too low, it pushes it back up. And that's how we're getting that really consistent squashed sound. Now, if we're looking at the OTT plugin version, well, let's listen to this. It's very, very similar. There's really not much difference. It's a very good emulation of the preset. The controls are a little bit different here. For starters, we've only got a general in and out gain. We haven't got specific in and out gain for each band. The time controls here, we got a general out gain. And then we've got out gain for each band as well. and then the amount of compression upwards and downwards. Basically just kind of like a time knob, but for the percentage of ratio uh, that's being applied, so. See how that's like a very, very exaggerated sound. And then once again, we've got the depth knob so we can dry wet this signal. And we can drag these, um, thresholds here as well to adjust it to the signal. Obviously, the lower the thresholds, the more compression and probably the lower signal. So you might need to adjust this output. Now, as we mentioned, this depth or amount knob on the original is the real kicker with how it actually allows the signal to work really well. As you can hear, this is a lot of compression on the on the drums. But it's when we blend it in a little bit that we get that nice texture without absolutely destroying the sound. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so I've got this song here, which I've been working on, and it's got OTT used on the drums, uh, different drums, loops, and samples. This is what it sounds like without OTT. <laughs> pretty good but I really like the texture that the OTT adds to the drums really gives and highlights certain groovy elements especially in those drum loops which um, have a bit more background noise and little bits of percussion that don't come through as clearly without the compression so let's see how it sounds once we turn on all these OTTs <laughs> It just really controls those drums, especially on this drum loop here. Really, really nice effect. So, for example, on drums, the best way to do it here is what what it does is it really kind of accentuates, as I said, those um, hits, and it brings up those lower percussive elements you don't normally hear, so you get a really thick drum sound. Uh, really key here to dry wet the amount with the amount knob here. It can be over the top too much, ironically, if you move it up to 100. Another really cool thing you can do with your lows is to boost up the input gain of the lows. So you get a really buffy sound. Same with the output gain. So what I've also used on here is this textures effects sound. And you would have heard this in the intro. Textures have a nice um, dynamic variation to them, especially like Foley recordings and the like. So compressing them like this really gives it like this breathy kind of pumping sound and get, it really accentuates the movement in the sound, uh, which it obviously is present in the original one, but this one sounds really squashed and really up close to the listener. So those changes in the sound sonically are highlighted quite nicely. It sounds really cool, especially because this is quite a stereo sound. Now, I haven't used it on any synths or bass in this track, but if I was to use it on here, the really key thing, like the texture, is in your sound design process, you want to add movement to your sound. So, this ARP sound here that I've used as a sample, if I was to add compression to this, I'd be looking at adding, like, you know, envelopes and LFOs to modulate certain parameters. You know. So then if I go and add OTT and we can use the plugin version. See how those filter sweeps are really accentuated? That's kind of nice and that's what gives it that character. Whereas if it's just a boring static sound, uh, and I'll undo that and I'll undo the filter. That sounds really cool as well, especially because we've got some cool highs in this sample and the delay moving it. So there's already some movement, but even if there was no delay. Yeah, it still sounds cool because it's a sample. But if it was a synth sound like just a saw wave where there's no variation in the sample, then you'd be running into issues and it would just sound very boring. Um, which is okay sometimes you just want a boring sound you don't necessarily always want super interesting if it's a like a layer or something but just something to consider if you're wanting to make it a bit more interesting and there's some general pointers with ott because it really depends on how you use it on a variety of different sounds but you can switch out this hard to a hardening and peak if you want even more intense compression uh for example on here <laughs> See, turning those off really makes it a bit more dynamic and squashed and not as even over time. You can also use multiple in a row. And I have made a little audio effect rack here um, where it's called Super OTT Rack. And this is included in our free OTT pack, which you can download in the description. You can hear that's really, really over the top. But 
it's really cool for creative sound design, uh, which I really like to do sometimes. So have fun with that. One really cool thing you can do, and it really, really has to be done tastefully, is use a tiny bit on the master channel. Because obviously, if you put it on the master, it sounds, really, sounds really bad. But if you... Like, no more than 20, 25%. I'd recommend even like 10%. It just really tightens up the whole mix, uh, depending on the genre and depending on what you've got going on in the mix, of course. But... I like to use it sometimes when I'm finishing off a track. It's a really nice, tasteful way to add some extra uh, control. And remember to always play around with the thresholds and the ratios here to really suit the sound you're working with. That's why we've created this pack here um, of different OTT versions. For example, uh, we've got this hyped low-end one which we could use on the drums, which really just is... Um, Times low end only, which is just a nice way to boost the low end. So we've really created a few different variations for you guys, some creative, some more functional. So feel free to play around with that, download that in the description. And the last thing I'll mention is just experiment with it. Experiment with OTT, experiment with everything in general, but obviously this is an OTT tutorial, so go nuts with the controls. You can't really break anything and you can always just replace the preset if you do break something. So, so make sure to grab the variation preset pack in the description, have fun with those. Just gives you some extra starting points, which can be really valuable. Sometimes the OTT default sound just doesn't cut it. Uh, so that's why I created the pack to help you guys out there. It'll just help add some unique flair. So you can grab it there. If I've missed any other cool ways you can use OTT, let me know in the comments below. It'd be really cool and I'm sure it'll help other people as well. And if you liked this video, as always, consider subscribing so you get to see more like this from the EDM prod team. Uh, and give it a like so YouTube knows it's a good video. Awesome, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good week.